So I did everything that could have killed me two dozen times. <laughs> Not simply out of egoistic jingoism that you want to do something others cannot do. It's about stretching yourself beyond your limits somewhere. Youth without any sense of adventure are not youth. First question is from Georgie. Sadhguru, we, we know that you are always a game for adventure, but many young people mindlessly get into adventure sports and even lose their lives in the process. Uh, what is your suggestion for the youth who get into adventure sports? Well, I have no right to advise anybody on this arena because I did everything that could have killed me two dozen times <laughs> but uh, I'm here <laughs> somehow. <laughs> so, uh, see when we say adventure, you can have ventures in your life or you can have adventure. Adventure means you don't know where your next foot is going to be. That's adventure, that means there is danger. No danger, everything safe, there is no adventure, isn't it? It's a venture. I'm not against ventures, but you're talking about adventure. That means you want to step into something that you don't know, isn't it? If you step into what you know, unpredictable, that's not an adventure, that's just an activity. So, I must tell you this. Why should I tell you all this and make some crazy people do something crazy? <laughs> well, uh, one thing, my father, the physician and constantly worried about me. His greatest worry was, he would knock his head and say, this boy has no fear in his heart, what will happen to him? I've heard this dialogue right from the age of five, six. He has no fear, what will happen, what will happen? One day I was around eleven, he said the same thing. He has no fear in his… because about twelve foot long cobra came, I just picked it up and walked away. So he… he kind of… he… this is the first time he's seeing, I've been doing since I was six <laughs> The first time he saw. And then he had a Vespa scooter. From the age of nine I've been riding it without him knowing, I was cleaning it for him, but I was riding it <laughs> So one day it's a, you know, in front of our house the road is slopey like this. I'm just coming in… putting it in the neutral gear and I'm standing on the seat and Coming like this on the Vespa scooter, he saw me and his heart broke <laughs> So he said, this boy has no fear in his heart, what to do? Then I asked him, when did fear become a virtue? He said, see I told you he has no fear <laughs> So why are we thinking that we have to enter life fearfully? If you're fearful, Fear is one of the worst emotions that people go through in their lives. Why fear happens is, you are imagining something that's yet to happen. Hello? You are imagining something. So what you are suffering is not some situation, you are suffering your own imagination. No, imagination is a fantastic thing, you are an architect. You must imagine, but if every building that you imagine, if you fear it may fall down, <laughs> it'll drive you crazy <laughs> Even in architecture, there is adventure, isn't it? You must see Ranakpur. Have you seen Ranakpur in Rajasthan? You must see. Ranakpur also has Kumbhalgar within twenty kilometers. It's the la second largest wall on the planet. Most Indians know because we keep all the things that we should be proud of a secret sits in Kumbhalgar, close to that is Ranakpur. This architect is a madman, but he's a very super sane madman because he knows what he's doing. See, if you build a building, this is a temple with one thousand columns. If you're thinking about safety, what would you do? Just in case over a period of time if one column collapses, because those days the material is only stone, there is no steel and concrete and stuff. You would make sure if one column falls down, there'll be a 
another column which will keep the temple up. No, he built it in such way, the audacity of him is such, if you pull down one column, the entire temple will come down. His pride in his intelligence and capability is such that he made it in such a way, if one column comes, the temple should not exist. And it's standing for over five hundred, six hundred years without an issue. You will see something like that in the yoga center. We built an elliptical dome, no steel, no concrete. And at the top, it's only eight inches thick. And just to freak people, I left a, a nine feet uh, diameter hole. People said, this is going to collapse. It will not collapse. If you don't have any adventure in your life, in whatever you do, it doesn't matter, in every sphere of life, there is room for adventure. This means you must trust your capability and competence and a step, one step more than that. There is a risk, of course. If there is no risk, there is no adventure, isn't it? So will young people get killed? Yes, unfortunately, sometimes it does. Before I became thirty-five years of age, at least twelve, thirteen of my friends died. Some in motorcycle, some in hang gliding and uh, all the things we were doing together, some of them died. Well, they didn't kill me, but could I live without having done all those things? No. Even if one of those situations had ended me, still I would do it. Not simply out of egoistic jingoism that you want to do something others cannot do, it's not about that. It's about stretching yourself beyond your limits somewhere. But today, the world is far more organized, there's a whole lot of equipment. When we were doing it, crazy things, we had no equipment of any kind. We just did things just like that. But today there is safety equipment, there are systems, there are nets and there are so many things. Well, one of you should start a venture in adventure and bring the right equipment and everything. See, right now, some of the young boys, when they get the two-wheeler, they want to do some stunt as I was doing, standing on the scooter and riding. They want to do those things. I'm saying, if you cannot stop them, only thing is they should not be doing it on the street. We must create a space where they can do it with a reasonable amount of safety. Is it one hundred percent safe? No. Nothing is one hundred percent safe. All of us are mortal, isn't it? But we must create reasonable levels of safety where youth will go through adventure with the minimum amount of risk. No risk adventure, there is no such thing. I was one person, people were very surprised when I spoke for Jallikattu in Tamil Nadu. They said, Sadhguru, you cannot say this. I said, see, are you capable of building sports arenas in every village? Can you make them play football, this one, adventure sport, everything in the villages, can you? There's really nothing. The only thing that they have is a traditional sport where once a year they play, which is risky, of course, but it comes from a tradition of doing something. It's risky for the animal, it's risky for the man, actually more risky for the man than the animal. When I spoke for it, everybody resisted, you can't say this. I said, see, Youth without any sense of adventure are not youth. You can always… you can already bury them as old men. They have to do something, but this does not mean they have to do wild things on the street. We can create situations and spaces where they can do this with reasonable amount of safety. There is no absolute safety. <laughs> Some of the parents uh, who are here don't approve of this. But uh, otherwise they'll do it somewhere where you can't see. <laughs> this is one thing I noticed in uh, United States, especially we are… our center is in Tennessee, so I'm just seeing this. If you go to your shop, I, I go to your motorcycle shop and I see they made motorcycles for three-year-olds. They actually built motorcycles for them. Three-year-olds are riding full on in the dirt bikes. I thought this is great, parents are standing there fully helmeted, jacketed, everything, they're riding. 
this is great because this needs to happen. Otherwise, they will do something wild when they are fifteen, sixteen, without any training, without any preparation, without the safety equipment, then we don't know how it will end.